coffee can be expensive, especially if you're getting two plus takeaway coffees a day. While it is very commendable to be supporting a small local business, it can still wear away at that hip pocket of yours. So today I'm going to be talking about the other methods of you being able to get killer coffee at home without having a thousand plus dollar machine. If you like the content, please like and subscribe. The standard. So uh, I used to work in a road street where we would sell very expensive coffee machines. They would range from the thousand mark and the top of the range one would be three thousand, three thousand five hundred dollars. And that was just for our at home domestic machines. This is definitely not the commercial machines you see because they can go upwards of fifteen K. Sometimes if you have the money to spend and you want like the Ferrari of coffee machine, it can cost you like fifty, sixty K. That's not including the big commercial grinders they have either, which can be, you know, three, four thousand dollars a pop. So I had this one guy at the roastery who came in and said, I thought coffee came from a jar. I said you would be forgiven for thinking that, sir. Ended up selling a coffee machine and setting up with some beans, so hopefully he now understands that the quality of coffee coming out of the bag is so much better than the coffee coming out of a jar. Two of the most common methods that you hear about are stovetops and plungers. They are pretty standard, you can get them anywhere. However, the coffee they produce might be the best, and there's a few reasons for this. One, they're very quick and very hot methods of doing it. And two, the beans you use might be ground the right way, they might be ground fresh, or they mightn't even be fresh themselves. The next method that I'm going to talk about is one of my favourites, and that's the AeroPress here. They're pretty popular, you can get them yeah, pretty much any online store, you know, eBay, Amazon, say that about 50 bucks and they're worth every cent. Once you've got it, all you need are your little paper filters to put in there. The way it works is you get your coffee cup, you put it in the top, and after you've done your brew, you push. Easy as that, easy to clean, durable. Would recommend for any coffee lover. If that be you or someone you know that loves coffee, if they don't have one of these, get them, get it for them. Christmas present, birthday, love it. One of the second methods I'm going to talk about is the siphon. I will be going a lot more in depth in a future episode about the coffee siphon. However, it is probably by far the coolest one to look at. It looks like a science experiment. And it's also about three, four hundred years old at this point. The next thing that you're going to want to look at after you've got your actual brewing equipment is how you're going to grind up your beans. So there's uh, a couple of, a couple of ways you can do this. Like, firstly, you can go to the supermarket. You can get pre-ground coffee. I don't really recommend that. The coffee isn't really too fresh at the supermarket anyway. Plus, the drawback of having pre-ground coffee is that it will lose its quality over time. And that time will be very short. So if you get locally made coffee, locally roasted coffee that is ground up when you buy it, that'll be a lot better than the coffee that's already pre-ground. But you're still running into that same problem. The final bit that I would recommend for any coffee lover is to get a grinder. This is my Commandante. It's like my best friend. It's amazingly versatile. In fact, it's said on the packet that you can make your own herb mixes with it. You can put like salt and pepper, a seasoning and stuff. Very, very easy to clean as well. Grinding plate comes off. That's how you adjust it. It's really clicky, it's great. The only thing with it is that it can take ages to grind up your coffee. So you can buy electric grinders as well. They're good. However, there's a couple of different types of blades you can get depending on what you want to do, which I will be elaborating more in a future episode. 
lastly, the thing you want to be doing is bean sourcing. As I have mentioned, the supermarket coffee is normally roasted overseas in mass bulk, sent over from shippers. So by the time you pick it up off the shelf at the supermarket, it is you know, about a year, 18 months old. Now it's not going to make for good coffee. The coffee at your local roastery will be fresh. You can normally get the roast state from them. And they can also help you out with the flavours you want, depending on the kind of bean you're getting. So I will, again, be elaborating on that more in a future episode. Kind of beans to get, depending on what drinks you like. But definitely consult with an expert. If you want to make even your plunger a better brew, that is more than possible, just by changing the product you put in there. So, wherever you are, whatever you're doing i hope you've learned something from this i hope if anything if i've convinced you to stop buying beans from a supermarket and buy them from a local business i'm winning and i hope that coffee tastes absolutely fantastic